we introduced you to the SW51 Mustang and its debut at Oshkosh. Today, we give you a factory tour in Germany where this Mustang is made. All right, so jumping in here with uh, Eric, head of design, and Christian, one of the directors here at Scale Wings, to kind of walk us through the uh, the factory and the manufacturing process. So, guys, welcome to the channel. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. Great to be on. All right, it's good to see you again. I've seen you at the shows and and so forth, and uh, making a really big impact in the aviation world with this awesome SW fifty one Mustang. So I let's um it. let's start out like. Obviously, this is all composite. We know that now. But uh, let's talk about the, the raw materials that go into this. Is it 100% carbon fiber? Is there Kevlar mixed into it? Just let's mention what's the raw materials. Generally, the, uh, the structures are made from uh, carbon fiber. However, in some places, we also use uh, glass fiber and um, aramid structures. Yeah, But the carbon is our base material which we use for uh, the structures. Okay, and the the molds themselves are they also done done in carbon? Are they done in uh, e glass, or what do you what do you make your molds from? Molds are made from uh, glass fiber, as this is cheaper material and absolutely enough uh, as for for these simple molds. Yeah. Okay, and the process that starts out, um, do you guys use a, a foam and then a CNC to make the mold, or? What does the initial shape look like before you pull a mold off of that, or you get what I'm saying? The the sh general shape of the mold was uh, taken uh, from 3D, and it was milled uh, on a 3D milling machine uh, as a um, positive uh, element. Yeah. And then we take the molds from this uh, positive element. Also, um, after this, we had to add some, uh, not some, but a lot of uh, some small changes. And of course, we had to add these all fake rivets, fake screws, which are originally on the surface of the mustang. So this was, um, let's say, mixed process of uh, producing the, these uh, molds. I would imagine that uh, the initial mold build is very time consuming because of all the details built into it. This isn't a clean, slated, smooth material. You have all these details, like you mentioned, the rivets and screws that are built into your molds. Absolutely, yeah. And so at the moment, I'm... The question then will be how many how many half frames can we make from those molds before they wear out with those details, yes. and that will be the million dollar question. But at the moment, it's it's uh, it's looking really nicely, and they, the 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 shells come out of those those molds very very nicely, very clean with with all the details. And yeah, we we've, we've made quite a few of these shells now, so it's looking good at the moment. Yeah, awesome. Now, there's a couple of different processes, I understand. I'm, I'm not really a, a composite person myself, but I've seen, obviously, different processes. And what process do you guys use to, uh, is it a vacuum bag or there's a, a new process that literally you pump the epoxy into it to make it as light as possible? What process do you use? Uh, as uh, our um, structures are, uh, this, they are sandwich uh, structures yeah, with carbon and uh, honeycomb uh, inside. So we have to use a vacuum to press the layers uh, one to, to the another. Uh, but um, generally, it's uh, the, the carbon is filled in with the resin uh, manually. Then uh, we put everything on the mold uh, and uh, cover with the foil and uh, put the vacuum to press all together. Okay. And that ensures the purpose of that is also to ensure that all the epoxy reaches all the nooks and crannies and is fully saturated so you don't have any air bubbles or pockets that would be a weak weak point i would assume in composites exactly. yeah 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 okay so uh about how many people do you guys have working now um from these from the processes all the way through to final inspection or yeah final inspection and test flight yeah so so here at the facility crossno where we are right now this is where we manufacture the, the mustang at a very high vertical integration um which means that we do a lot of the process in-house so we only really buy the engines and we only really buy the engines and um, propeller and the rest uh, landing gear components. There's some anodizing and stuff that needs to be done externally. 
and of course, ballistic rescue systems, something that we don't you know, make in, in house. You, you don't manufacture a parachute <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the explosion no. itself. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, no, we can do like we have a CNC operator, uh, CNC machine, and um, and, and milling and, and lamination, of course, which is the core competence um, and uh, testing, structural testing, and, and, and all of that. So, in total, to your question, uh, we are above thirty people right now. Have gone, and we are we are growing quite quite a lot this year, um, planning to yeah hire considerably, almost up to fifty people, fifty uh, percent more. So, yeah, that will be around 45, 50 people this year. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing for a startup company to go from uh, zero to 100, basically. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're, you're really attacking this. Um, jump back over to the structures for a minute. Um, how many different ballpark molds do you guys actually have? And then the, uh, let's call it the superstructure of the, like the fuselage and wings. Um, is it literally, um, you know, two halves for each of that? Or how, how many big molds are there to put this together? Uh, generally two modes for each uh, big uh, element like fuselage, center wing, outer wing, left, right, uh, each control surfaces uh, uh, are inlet um, on, under the uh, fuselage or landing gear doors for, for all of these we have uh, two modes uh, or sometimes even three modes it depends to how complicated is the shape of the uh, element and um, of course for each um, inner structures everything what is inside there are also um, also, there are a lot of them. <laughs> so, so now on the fuselage part of it, right? Let's talk about that for a minute, because uh, you know, yeah. exterior, interior. Does that all come from one mold, or do you have like an interior insert that sh that showcases all the rivets and stuff like that, or is that built into the exterior mold as one piece? Uh, no, generally, uh, as example of fuselage, yeah. Uh, the mold is uh, divided into two pieces, the left uh, and and the right, yeah, and uh, all these um, these uh, rivets, uh, screws, and so uh, sh are shaped on the uh, on the wall of the mold, and uh, we laminate first uh, one shell, then another shell. We glue in all in in inside structures, then we close the molds and gluing all them together, and of course after this we uh, demold uh, and take out from the mold. Okay, so so a left and a right fuselage will yeah. already have all the detail, the high details That's right. built into it. Well, that saves a lot of time in construction versus having a separate one and then gluing or molding that into it once it's pulled out and joined. Absolutely, yeah. And and again, the, the fuselage is really um, it's a monocoque structure once it is put together. We have the right half and the left half all the way from the firewall forward where the engine mount um, attaches to the to the to the structure. All the way, including the vertical stabilizer. This is one piece, left half, right half, glued together in the center. And then, I mean, when you receive a kit, this is what people love so much. They open the container and then unpack it, and they see the shape of an aircraft. Already. It looks like an airplane when you yeah. receive it. <laughs> yeah, like that, you know, which is quite motivating. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Let's let's uh, back up a minute to some of the the details of uh, the construction as far as um, quality control. We were talking off camera a few minutes ago. Um, there's some processes that you guys do to make sure that everything is up to a certain standard. And what are some of those uh, processes or standards for a composite aircraft? Right. So, so what we um, we learned here from from the processes um, yeah, working together with the uh, Polish Authority for Aviation, Civil Aviation Authority. So we're following a lot of the standards that are that you can find in the certified aviation world. So CS23, Amendment Five, or also Part 23. Uh, standards of quality control. Uh, what does it mean? We take samples, resin samples for every piece that we produce. We do data locking of all the temperatures, of course, for the temper and uh, curing processes. Um, for every kit that we build, there's a big folder of documents that have been quality controlled with the corresponding samples, et cetera, um, that we can trace back um, every little piece that we installed and how it was done in one, what atmosphere and conditions. Um, so these are processes that you usually follow in certified aviation. Um, so that's what we do. So, so yeah, with composite and epoxy, time and temperature is exactly uh, all is of those thing. parameters. Yeah, and we have we have designated quality controllers in the factory that do nothing else but quality control. 
So when you when you do a layup, obviously you're, you're checking your chemicals, your chemistry as you're doing this. Do you have, you have like a layup room, which is like probably a dirty room? Do you do you roll it into like an oven, if not to bake it, but just to to control the the temperature and humidity, or what does that look like for you guys? Mm-hmm. In, in other words, is there a, a process once you lay it up for the for it to cure and to control the atmosphere? What do you ro- actually roll everything into like an oven or some type of climate controlled room to control those things or? We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com. Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net. The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com. Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we the, the big structures all together, we have our own curing and temper chambers and then all of the big molds on their jigs are, are, are moved in there. And, and there's several um, probes inside the chamber that monitor the atmospheres at different points. Um, and also there are some test pieces um, laminated where we can trace the, the, the ramp ups and ramp downs. Yeah, because I would imagine, you know, whether it's uh, the dead of winter, which I assume is really cold over there, or the summer, that all that's going to matter when you're trying to cure something for a length of time. So if you can control your atmosphere, um, obviously that makes things more, more steady in the build process. Absolutely. I mean, there are, of course, there, there can be days in the summer where it will be difficult to do it at all. But in, in the wintertime, it's just, it's, it's expensive, but it can be done in the summertime. It depends on the humidity and, and, the, and the temperatures of the day. So what, to what level are you delivering these? And I would say this is like an extreme quick build kit, right? Um, what once you join the halves and all that kind of stuff, what else goes into it, uh, the structure before you actually ship it out the door? Uh, we ship this with uh, uh, fuselage uh, w- wings, which wing uh, consists of three pieces: yeah? center wing, out, left outer wing, wing and uh, right out, outer wing. Uh, all control surfaces, which are already um, assembled on, um, uh, on on the wings and uh, on the stabilizer. Uh, also a steering mechanism, which is installed inside. However, it's uh, for transport purposes must be uh, deinstalled. And uh, of course, the uh, wing is, um, as in our airplane, wing and fuselage are different par- parts. It's not uh, integral, one part. Uh, they are already uh, pre-fitted, so the customer must only uh, screw them together and fit the coverings, which uh, um, covers the uh, places between the center wing and, uh, and uh, fuselage. And also we deliver a landing gear, which is already um, assembled in such a um, stage that it's not uh, required then to deassemble this to uh, install on the airplane. So you have a, a sub-assembly mostly already together for That's those right. parts. Okay. Well, let's jump into that for a second. We've talked about um, the composite side of things, but there's a lot of hardware and different sub-assemblies that go into that. And you also manufacture all of that at your factory there as well, or majority of it? Yeah. As far as a landing gear and what other what other hard parts or weldments or you know, yes. most of it is done in house. Then we we give it to outside companies for the most complex milling parts, just for speed because they they can make the faster in, in the bigger five axis CNC machines. But most of it we can do in house, and then there's some external companies that do the anodizing on yellow chromatic for, sure. for the corrosion protection. Um, and then here basically everything come comes together. I assume that the, the major sub-assembly would be, in fact, because this is retractable, is the landing gear. And then maybe um, maybe you've got, what, what we talked at Oshkosh, what is the um, the end result of the um, the slider? Is, is it a slider or is there a tilt canopy? Which you guys go with, yeah. or is there still an option to have either or? It's both. And so so it, it moved, it slides back now more than it used to be at, at Oshkosh. It goes back about, um, about, how many between centimeters? 25 and 30 centimeters. So centimeters, <laughs> I have to translate that. Um, um, what it is? Like in, 10 inches. 10 inches. 10 inches. Okay. So, so before it was about six inches. Now it's about 10 inches. 
that it can move back. And then we shift it to this. So then you swivel, I think is the word, to the side or you shift it to the side. The only reason for that is it's not that we, we, we understand that the original Mustang only had a sliding canopy, but in order to access the rear seat, I don't know, and the people that have tried it in the real P51, uh, it's quite difficult to get on that rear seat, even in the real one. So we decided to slide it back and then open it to the side so that you have really easy access to the rear seat. And, and, and recently also a gentleman of six foot five was sitting there and he still had a lot of space in the canopy. So that's the reason why it's, it's this sounds strange at the beginning, why slide and then turn it. But the reason is to have perfect accessibility, easy entry and exit for the passenger. Yeah, and I would, I would assume there's some safety built into that if you need to uh, get out of there in a hurry and not have to try to duck under a canopy to get out of it, yeah. The canopy can completely be jettisoned as well. So. Okay. And there and there are some components to that for the, the slide rails and tilt mechanisms and that kind of stuff. Other than that, the other things would be um, what are the type of sub-assemblies that would be... The the, the control systems, the push-pull rods that we make in-house, they're full carbon push-pull rods, um, landing gear with a wheel brake system, um, the, the, all the control surfaces. Uh, the hinges, this is important to, to mention, uh, we do the alignment of the hinges um, on the ailerons and, and, and flaps and, and um, vertical um, and horizontal stabilizers. The reason is that these are very critical alignment processes and we have special tools and special jigs here that help us do this perfectly. Also, the com connecting the center wing to the fuselage. And uh, we just figured uh, it would be really a, a be really difficult job for, for a builder out there, just wasting a lot of time for something that's not adding safety um, to, to the end product. So we align it, and then they uh, disassemble it there and start, basically. So the fuselage is joined to the center section of the wing there and then disassembled after? Okay, good. So that's it's in a factory jig. So there's there's no question. Everyone will be the same, and you don't have to worry about uh, uh, the wings being swept forward or, or aft or whatnot. Yeah, exactly. dialed in. The, the the idea of the quick build kit um, philosophy that we do here is we want to have the safest um, Mustangs out there possible, but still give the builder the maximum educational um, value that he can have putting something together. And we don't see a benefit doing leaving too many questions open. <laughs> So we'd rather do it and then undo it again so he can start um, and, and put it together. But safety is the highest priority. Um, as far as uh, the avionics, is there um, <clears throat> like a pre-made uh, kit for some of the basics? And then obviously it's customizable for what exact instruments or products they want in it. So basically we, we, we've um, designed three packages of avionics. We call it classic, um, silver and gold. And the classics gets to start it with a classical steam gauge arrangement. Um, and, and if, if re requested by the customer, we can uh, also drill the holes for those openings um, for the steam gauges. But basically we, we provide the instrument panel um, and then for, uh, but also the equipment. So everything can be ordered through scale wings, everything that, that regards uh, engine, propeller, avionics, rescue system. So it's basically a one-stop shop and, and you can order it all together. But with avionics, yeah, classic, uh, just steam gauges, then we have silver, which is a combination of steam gauges at the top and then uh, a seven inch uh, glass cockpit in the center of Dynan or Garmin, so Dynan HDX or Garmin G3X. And the gold package, which we're doing on number seven now, uh, is a 10 inch Garmin G3X with a G3, G5 backup and another G3X seven inch in the rear seat. So basically, now, the now that's avionics. How inclusive is the electrical system? Do you have like a pre wired thing to go out to like? The lights and the landing gear and, and you know, that kind of stuff, or is that all as built um, on site by the customer? It's a package that we prepare to be shipped as well. Yeah. Okay. And I assume um, being that you've got several flying now that you've got a, a nicely developed firewall forward package that is basically off the shelf parts to be able to put this together. Exactly. The same. Which yeah. would include the engine at the mount. Moment, yeah. En engine mount, um, Rotex 915 at the moment, um, the spinner. Um, and the propeller and then auxiliaries that you may want to have. Um.